Hello everyone and welcome to the Sleuth Q&A series where you ask me questions and I try to give you semi-coherent answers to the best of my ability and uh, sometimes I can't give you very good answers and if I can't I try to point you in the right direction of where you can get good answers. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to answer the question what web browser should I use? Well today we'll start with speed first. Now let me bring up the study that I used in order to show which browsers were the fastest. This is from ZDNet which is a reliable source. They ran benchmarks but this is back in February of 2009. Remember this is an ongoing war so these, this data might not be accurate by the time you read it. It's pretty much how it is in the computer world anyway. But the whole point of this is if you look at the top three browsers, it is Safari, Mozilla, Minefield, and Google Chrome, and they are really close to each other, even if you look at them on the graph. So choosing between these three is pretty much a safe bet for rendering speed. You're going to get pretty much the same. Now, Safari is faster. I've used it. It is definitely faster than Minefield and Chrome. Um, Safari is a little clunky on its interface in my opinion, I, but it's more of a personal preference thing. It's not clunky as in slow, it's just a little awkward. I'm not a Mac user, so it's just a little awkward for me. doesn't mean it's terrible. Uh, Minefield has its own bugs, it's in beta, and uh, that's what uh, Norbum was trying to tell me. Uh, Minefield in Chrome, Chrome has a stable release, but it's also in beta. I recommend the beta one. Uh, but Chrome, even beta, I've worked with significantly and had very, very few issues. But he does make a good point. It is in beta, which means that it may, in fact, cause you headaches or issues. There's a Chrome, Chrome stable version. Just Google Chrome to get to it. Firefox, of all the stable ones, is uh, it's, it's, a, it's quite a bit slower. It's actually three times slower than Chrome. And uh, Safari is also a stable browser. Uh, mine feels really the only one in significant beta where it's still in, in deep in testing phases and and uh, you might have some headaches with it. Now essentially just by looking at this graph obviously you're going to want to go with one of the top three. Safari is stable so you don't have to worry about beta headaches with that. Minefield's in hardcore beta but if you're a Firefox lover you're going to love that because it's from the makers of Firefox. Chrome is from the makers of Google which actually has been rated the most secure browser so if you're concerned about security issues go with Chrome. I love Chrome so I'm a Chrome fanboy but again a lot of this is going to come down with interface preference. So we ask our question what browser should we use? Well I'm going to go over some of the real quick features in here. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm using Chrome. Uh, it's got the tab browsing just like anything else. Uh, any other bigger ones right now have those. Uh, it uses this history bar, which is also used in um, Safari, which basically shows all the, when you create a new tab, it shows you all of the, the historical things you visited, but like by most popular. So whatever sites you visit the most are going to show up here. One thing I love specifically about Chrome is that you can drag out your windows. In other words, each, each part of the browser is actually its own separate running browser. So this tab is actually its own version of Chrome running, which means that if this one locks up, my other tabs will stay running. And that's nice because if I'm surfing the web and I accidentally go to a site that causes some kind of conflict and that little tab locks up, 90% of the time I can click on another tab and it'll still work. Or I can just create a new tab while that one's either loading or trying to resolve the conflict. What, that's again one of the reasons I love Chrome, but Chrome is security wise also fantastic. You're not going to worry about browser hijacks, but uh, with that being said, it's also the most lightweight one, so you can't, you're not going to find a lot of compatibility out there. So if you love your Yahoo toolbar, your Google toolbar, or whatever toolbar you might love, well, obviously you won't need the Google toolbar. If you type anything in the top bar, it's going to search Google. But if you like a specific toolbar or plugin, you're not going to find a lot of those with Chrome. Safari is another one I'm quite impressed with. Uh, visually, as with any product Apple makes, it's stunning. I mean, this this is like the same history as, as the as the Google, um, the same new tab window as the Google one, and it just visually it's stunning. It looks amazing. It loads incredibly fast. Website rendering is incredibly fast. It's stable. I would strongly recommend this to a lot of you. Again, I'm just so used to, uh, to Windows and of course it's not going to be as secure as like Chrome because it's uh, a more popular browser. Security on these types of things, just like operating systems, is, is pretty much proportional to popularity. 
the most popular products are usually the least secure because you have to think about it in the sense that when per people are writing viruses or spyware, they're going to write it for the most commonly used products. And obviously Safari for Mac users is the number one product and uh, Internet Explorer for PC is the number one product. But uh, essentially with this whole browser debate, it's up to you. I mean, sit down, work with them. I strongly recommend starting with these three. I start, strongly recommend starting with Safari, Chrome, and Minefield. If you're a Firefox fanboy and you want faster rendering speeds and load speeds, try Minefield. It is in an unstable format, but it's much faster than Firefox. Firefox is a solid browser. It's a great browser. I used it for the longest time. Chrome, even the Chrome beta, is extremely stable right now. I've had very few issues with it. Um, and Safari, of course, is stable because it's been out for a long period of time. Now, if you're not happy with any of those and you want a more mainstream browser because it's been tested for a longer period of time and they've ran it through more benchmarks, your rendering speed may be slower, but you do have that reliability that a lot of the plugins are going to work, a lot of the website features are going to work. Websites are often designed for certain browsers and they don't test them on other browsers. So make sure you at least have one mainstream browser and one non-mainstream browser. Um, I, I prefer Chrome for my non-mainstream, and I always have Internet Explorer uh, for, like, Windows updates will only use Internet Explorer. And I usually have Safari in the off chance that my Google Chrome doesn't work, because Safari is the fastest mainstream browser out there right now. I hope this answers your questions. Um, if you have any other questions related to browsers, just uh, send, me a, uh, send me a message or leave a comment below. Please rate. Please rate. I hope, uh, hope you guys are liking these videos. Go ahead and subscribe. Subscribing really helps me out, and it, uh, it gives me a little bit of personal motivation. Uh, and you never know. I might talk about something else you really wanted to know and didn't realize it. Uh, don't forget to visit my website, www.pcmichiana.com. You can download all of these browsers at my website. And I go straight to the download link so you don't have to deal with the headaches of going through the main websites, especially with Minefield. It's hard to find. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Q&A series where I try to answer your questions to the best of my ability and try to make it as non-geeky as possible. Today, I have a quick question that was asked about Facebook. They wanted to know how they can appear offline to their friends when they're actually online. Now, there's many reasons for wanting to do this, mostly because you don't want others to see you when you're constantly logged on all day, or you simply don't want to be bothered. Now, it's really easy. All you have to do is when you're logged into Facebook, click on the chat in the bottom right-hand corner, click on Options, click on Go Offline. That's all there is to it. Thanks for tapping by, and... If you have any other questions, just ask.